In April, we brought you the story of a bizarre and macabre crime called caesarean kidnapping. <laughs> Where mostly female perpetrators steal babies from their mother's wombs. At the time, 25-year-old Ntombenkane Makulana had been charged with the crime. Hers was one of three known caesarean kidnapping cases in South Africa. In court, warrant officer Sunny Boy Ngema argued that Makulana faked a pregnancy and then murdered her expectant neighbor Gabisile before cutting her open and stealing her baby. Last month, Makulana was found guilty and sentenced to 20 years in prison. <laughs> Acting judge Brian Mashile at the South Gauteng High Court said Makulana deserved two life sentences, but that he had accepted some of her mitigating circumstances as compelling and substantial. These included that she pleaded guilty and laid bare the facts of her life that led to the crime. This week, public health facilities are under scrutiny as more women come forward alleging they were forcibly sterilized because of their HIV status. I died when they told me that I was HIV. I died when my baby died. I died when they told me that I can't have a baby. the Department of Health here in Gauteng agreed in an out-of-court settlement to pay around half a million rand to a woman who says she was forcibly sterilized because of her HIV status. Since then, more women have come forward and the department faces the possibility of an avalanche of claims. The Minister of Health insists forced sterilization has never been public policy. Where once warm smiles and hugs greeted her, Nokutula Kati comes home to a reality that no mother should ever have to. 13 years ago, her five-year-old son, Kanya, died in her arms. His tiny body, unable to continue the fight against the HIV virus. The grief and loss is still very raw for Nokutula, but it was the hope of having another baby that kept her going. In 2010, she was diagnosed with cancer and had to have her uterus removed. It was only then that Nokatula discovered what doctors at this Durban hospital had allegedly done, moments after she'd given birth to Kanya that New Year's Eve in 1996. When the doctor took me to the uh, theater and do all the procedure, he asked me, why did you tie your troops? I said, no. He asked me several times, Nokutula, why did you tie the troops? You tie your troops because you are HIV or you tie your troops because you like. The health department has agreed to pay around half a million rand in an out-of-court settlement with one HIV-positive woman. Some say before antiretroviral drugs were proven to reduce mother-to-child transmission, forced sterilization was a silent policy of the health department. The minister flatly denies this. There is no policy to force anybody into sterilization. Such a policy doesn't exist. The minister blames what he calls evil health workers for imposing their own will on HIV-positive patients. It's not because of lack of knowledge or that the government hasn't given that knowledge. It's, it's deliberate if something like that is happening. Maybe it happened to one or two women because the health worker was evil or just anti-human or, you know, not following ethics. But these are not isolated incidents. According to the Women's Legal Center, more than 20 women have come forward with similar allegations. They believe there are many more who are oblivious. Others 
too scared to reveal what they perceive to be a shameful secret. There are people who believe, as an HIV-positive woman, that you should never have children. If I want to have a baby, you have no right, you have no say. This is my body, this is me. Whatever I want to do, I will do it. Many of these women allege they were forced to sign sterilization forms while in labor. Obviously, sterilization taken in labor, when a patient is in labor, um, has raised a lot of questions. Should we actually be taking consent during labor? Is the woman uh, competent enough? Is she in the right frame of mind to consent? What makes these cases difficult to fight in court is that in many instances, the woman's signature is on the consent form. The nurses will argue that we have spoken to the woman she signed, and the woman will say, I was not in the right frame of mind. It's no different from a will that is contested in court because somebody believed the person who wrote that will, who has died, was not in the right frame of the mind to do it. Then it becomes a big argument in court. I think in this case, the patients are saying that we were not informed, or if we were informed, it was um, coerced, it was enforced on us, um, or I felt not having an option. I just signed those papers because I was in pain. I didn't know that I was signing for my death sentence. I died when they told me that I was HIV. I died when they told me that my baby is HIV. I died when my baby died. I died for the fourth time when they told me that I can't have a baby. Next, we meet an HIV positive mother who says she's raising happy and healthy children despite her status. many South African teenagers, Masako Mokoteri grew up disillusioned with very little appropriate sex education. These were the results. Sometimes I know quite a nice the reality is that doctors and nurses across the country are seeing HIV positive mothers giving birth to multiple children. Masejo's story calls into question the quality of sex education in schools and at home. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 Nine children at the age of 32. This is not the life Masejo Mokotedi dreamt of growing up. 
bona ke gola dream ya ka ne luba police officer so all that was shut down because of i couldn't listen to my parents her mother regina had high expectations for masego ha a masego a ya ko high school ka mogo masego na a le botlhale ka te le principal a wile anka masego gore a ile representa bana ba ba botlhale o ne a kena ko thaba ko langlagd o ngwe to find that to re masego o mo meleng ne e le ngwana o neng a le botlhale le nna ke sepetsene ke ratilo re ha a ka fetsa school e be social work these hopes were shattered during Masejo's matric year. She had just turned 18 when her mother noticed her body changing. My mother told me, Masejo, you are pregnant. I said, no, I know you, my child. You are pregnant. Masejo was doing well at school. She considered having an abortion, but says her boyfriend refused. Then he said to me, you can't make an abortion. That baby is my first child. He was her high school sweetheart, the first man she ever slept with. We learned to be our own kids, everything. Lemana, our own kids, everything. Masejo left school to have her baby. The next year, she went back, determined to complete her matric and pursue a career. They refused to take me back. They said I had a child. She says she applied at other schools in Soweto, but none of them would accept her. They say they can't take me because of I'm doing my metric. She says some of the schools questioned her brilliant marks and accused her of using a fake report card. They refused to take me. Then I gave up for school. From then on, her future would be centered around men, children and housework. It wasn't long before the father of her first baby left. Hakinekile, eight months pregnant. She, he had another girlfriend. I gave birth on October. Another girlfriend gave birth on November. We were both pregnant by the same father. At first, she bought a formula and everything for the child. So after three months, she, he disappeared with the, with the other girlfriend. Her whole family was prepared to support her so that she could progress at school. But when the door of education was slammed in her face, she found comfort in the arms of yet another man. Ke thusa ka ngwana ke tsetsa hore ho tle o mongwe hape nna ke re ke mthusa ka ngwana gore a khutle le skolo ka nte ke nna ke mo fa matla gore no ke tla dula ke sala le bana e a ba tla ba pregnant gape Masejo says her new boyfriend and father of her second child physically abused her Bona nsha fa ka te mo lengwe go ibile o ke lang hlaba so we get to say that we're not too on our own pulaya. So I recognize that then I broke up with him. At the age of 19, when her focus should have been her career, Masejo was a mother of two, preoccupied with finding love and a stable home for her children. She met a new man and again fell pregnant. I thought I found someone who will love me. He did everything for me. He did everything for my kids. He was working. Yeah, it was so nice. I kitu le mo chara tenka tsama ya ka ilo dula ko bona kitu si for five years leen. It was a new beginning, and for the first time, the future looked stable and promising. But a blood test was about to change everything. I found out that I'm HIV positive with my uh, third child, and. By the time, I didn't tell the father because of I was scared that he would run away. Yeah. I felt useless and I felt like it's the end of the world, even though that they told me that it's not the end of the world. But She says she turned to alcohol and soon fell pregnant again. It took me time to accept that I'm HIV positive. Then 
My mother used to ask me, myself, why are you drinking each and every day? Why are you drinking? I told her that I want to enjoy life the way it comes. Because of when I die, I will never enjoy life. I am a social worker, 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 I am a Little did Maseko's mother know that more grandchildren were on the way. Once a star pupil, at this stage, Maseko was doing very little thinking. I never thought about, uh, about uh, contraceptives. And my mother used to tell me, Maseko, go and tell them to the clinic that you want a loop. I said, no, I don't want loop. I don't want to prevent. I was like, I was, I was always drunk. I never care what will happen to me. Maseko was <laughs> always drunk. Conception. I I kiss her and I be a young and callous as a dictator for he. He lost the realizer. He he book he he he. Barry, us the realizer. Ona lidi charase kana kana koro one abapala. Erike rahire nsiki kai kelelo ya ka e. Her mother says she went to great lengths to seek ways to stop her daughter from falling pregnant again. She says she even considered getting her sterilized without her knowledge, but social workers wouldn't allow it. Social workers are like, hey, you're risky, you're risky, you're risky, you're risky, you're risky, you're risky, Thankfully, with the help of antiretroviral drugs, she was able to give birth to HIV-negative children while continuing on her search for a caring husband and father. I told myself that Kilo then I found a boyfriend who is the father of my six. six. I fell pregnant, then it was okay, then I hid my kids uh, from him. So knowing that we five. She gave birth to a baby boy. But when he was only nine months old, her man left her after questioning the child's paternity. Soon after that breakup, her ex-boyfriend came back into her life. He vowed to fend for his family and promised to love and care for Masejo. She had three more children with him. She says with her last child, she sought to have an abortion. I considered abortion. I went to Shawela Clinic. Mm. I, I told them that I want to keep the baby. I want to make an abortion. They checked me first. They saw. They said to me, you can't have an abortion. I said, well, they told me that you are four months pregnant. <laughs> Masejo's mother gave up on her daughter choosing rather to focus all her energy on her son, a student at the University of Johannesburg. The father of six of Masejo's children also walked. By then, she had nine children. She says her ex refuses to assist her and misses all his maintenance court dates. An error on her ID stating that she is a man has made it impossible for her to apply for a child support grant. So the entire household of 15 survives purely on the great-grandmother's pension. Masejo's mother helps with the bare basics. 
na masala ri nyaka ke sa bonete ba gore bana le sepa sa hlapa bana le sepa sa re ba hlatswe se wa sheni bodi kubo as long as mili mili o le teng le oile go re ke di basic go difficult mo ntlong ka re re family ya 15 and o di mo mo ke na le ngwana o leng gore o ko university and then ngwana o lena ko university bazari ha mo patele registration fee chelete e ke kholang ha idumele gore nka patalla ngwana registration so ke ka di ma di chelete ko machonisa ke tla patala ntwe re bitsang gore ke nzalo for the whole year ka re le mogolo ka no sa ntumele gore eh nka patala chelete ena e felese Masejo says she wants to get sterilized as soon as she stops breastfeeding her youngest child. She has also decided to take the pill. She no longer dreams about a man who will rescue her, nor does she have special wishes for herself. I just live for the kids of my sleep, for my kids. I don't think I do have a dream right now. Despite having to compete for her attention, Masejo's children adore their mother. Masejo says she is trying to ensure her daughters don't make the same mistakes she did. Maybe a shaman, if like banana bang, if bachola, then let them make a job like her. Like give a long and over, because it's a little more booking. Because they talk about booking, get above the bashman, but long signaling fear, casting an each little attack. I am telling them each and every day. This girl is one of them. Now one of her life, we are going to be a son. A life of predictable routine that will begin again at 5 30 tomorrow morning. Checkpoint, we like to look for opportunities to help individuals and impact communities. Through Masako's story, we're hoping to start a movement that will help empower young women to make better decisions and live with vision and purpose. If you're already in this line of work, please get in touch with us. We'd love to hear your ideas. Thanks for watching Checkpoint. I'm Ngebili Mabuse.